So in the last module, we talked about Ruby, the introduction to Ruby, and we talked about how Ruby is an object-oriented language. And I even mentioned that Ruby is sort of object-possessed. And we talked about how you could use Ruby's built-in classes to create things, but we haven't talked about how you yourself create classes in Ruby. So that's what this module is going to be about. So just to recap some basic fundamentals of object-oriented programming, some OO, in OO you identify things that your program is dealing with. And you have blueprints for those things, and those are called classes. Classes are going to be your containers of methods that have to do with behavior that that thing, that object exhibits. So you have your blueprint, which is a class, and then you, you build objects, which are instances of those things, of those classes, and the objects are going to have instance variables. In Ruby, instance variables begin with an at symbol. Now, as we're going to see, it's interesting that in Ruby, you don't have to declare instance variables ahead of a game, like you would do maybe in Java. Instance variables just show up. They spring into existence when first used. And once they do, they are available to all instance methods of a class. We'll see an example of that in a minute. So classes are your factories. You call the new method on a class, which, which calls an initialize, which initializes your constructor. Object state can be and really should be initialized inside this initialize method, which is the constructor. So let's see an example of all this. So in this case, we have a person class. Person class has a constructor, which is inside this initialize method, which takes two parameters, a name and an age. And those get assigned to instance variables, which just show up inside of a constructor at name and at age. Now, the way you actually use this is you say person.new, so you call new, under the hood new calls initialize, and passes in these two parameters, the name and the age, and you have your person1 variable. Now, if you want to see at this point what your instance variables are, you could say dot instance variables, and you'll see that you have your name and the age as instance variables. Now, let's say you have another method inside the class called getInfo, which maybe gives you some additional info about, about this person. So, once you call this method getInfo, and again you say instance variables, you will see now that you have three instance variables, name, age, and additional info. Instance variables of a class are private, and they, which means they, can, they cannot be accessed from outside the class. Methods, on the other hand, have public access by default, and we'll see later how you change that. To access instance variables, you need to define getters and setters. So, again, let's take a look at this person class. You have the name and the age variables passed into the constructor. How do you actually get the information Get, get those variables back? Well, you have to define a getter, which in this case is name, and a setter, which is name with an equal sign. So unlike what you might have seen in other languages where you have get name or set, or set name, you don't have that in Ruby. Ruby, just you just define methods with actual name. So in this case, it's name and name equals for getter and setter. So what happens is, you have person dot new Joe fourteen, which is your person, and then you could do dot name, which will return the value of an instance variable called at name. And then, if you want to assign a new value, so you would do name equals Mike, and then at that, and then and if you do dot name again, you would get Mike. So it looks like you're directly accessing the variables, but you're really not. You're just calling the methods, the getter method and the setter method. Now, it's also interesting to point out that the setter method could have a space inside of it, but that's fine. Ruby understands what you mean. And just to illustrate my point that, that you're not actually accessing 
the variables, you're going through the getters and the setter, because if you do dot age, it will tell you that age is an undefined method, and if you haven't defined it, there's no way to get the age of a person. So you might assign it, pass it in as a second parameter, but there will be no way to look at it unless you define a getter method. Now, a lot of times it seems kind of silly because all the getter and the setter are doing is just get an existing value or set in a new value. There should be an easier way instead of actually defining the getter methods to be able to get to those values. So as we saw in this case, you have a name and a name. You're going to have to have an age and, and an age equals. And if you have a lot of instance variables, that's a lot of methods. So what you could do is you could do an, an error underscore symbol, uh, sy syntax, I'm sorry. And there are three different versions. There is an at reader, which defines only a getter. There's an at writer, which defines only a setter. And there's an at adder accessor, which defines a getter and a setter. So let's see an example of that. This looks much cleaner. You're basically saying, I need a person class that has two getters and setters, one for name and one for age. So then you do person.new, and then you say person.name is nil because your add name instance variable has, hasn't been defined yet. But then you could assign it dot, dot name equals Mike, dot age equals 15, and then you could get them back by doing dot name and dot age. You could also, um, because Ruby is loosely typed, there's no telling of what the age is, if it's an integer or a string, you could always override it as a string and say that now age is a string 15, and that age then will give you 15. 